Today's video is all about a Mila, a Mila S7. This Mila S7 to be precise, but also a cautionary tale for all Mila S7s because these things are, I'm going to say dreadful. I do not like them. When they work well, they are really good. When they don't work well, they are an utter, utter liability. This one's been written off. I can't really repair it. And I'm going to show you why and tell you what to look out for when you buy one of these so you don't end up like its poor owner who came to me expecting it to be a simple fix. It isn't. Let's have a look. Yes, hello my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? This is going to be a controversial video, if ever there was one, because I'm going to get all the Mila fans, you know, in this one's corner, backing it up, saying that it's not all bad, and you're right, they're not. When they work, these are fantastic machines. My dad's had one since new, and it's still going really, really well, but... Unfortunately, I do not share those opinions. I do not like these. They are horrible to work on. Parts are pretty much non-existent, which we'll get to in a minute. This one came to me via a lady who I've done some business with before. She bought it from Facebook used. Don't know how much she paid for it. Whatever it was, it was too much. She bought it used in good faith, and obviously when you buy things on Facebook Marketplace, you can't really take it back. And she was going to use it for her cleaning business. I don't know what sort of business it is. I think she just goes around her friends' houses and cleans and vacuums for some money rather than being a professional cleaner. And bless her, she knew it wasn't working right. She messaged me and I gave her some troubleshooting tips because quite honestly I tried to just not have it at all. I knew what was coming, I know what these things are like and it was sort of confirmed when she took off the blockage release valve for me on camera and you know tell me that yeah there, there were a few bits in it actually it was completely clogged up and unfortunately how the heck do you get these open? Come on, just open. You don't even have to ever go back together. Grr. What the heck is going on? There have already been quarter turns. You must, you are not. Oh my goodness. Bear with me. Ah, there we go. Yeah, this was all plugged up with rubbish. And they do this demonstrates how narrow the air path is. It has to pass through there, literally at almost a 90 degree angle. You were unlocked, I can tell. Now one's broken, look. I don't think we did that. I didn't hear it snap. One's missing one of its tabs completely. And as soon as, you know, she said it was plugged up and then told me something else, I knew that it was game over. Let me, let me plug it in. We'll get that out of the way first. All we've got to do, look, is lower the bottom cord hook and pull the cable off. Now, this machine is better than others in that all the paint is on the handle, all meters with these handles. You can see it's starting here at the front. All the paint falls off and they just look trash. The cable is also in excellent condition because not even I have ever managed to get a meter handle apart before. Well, I did but it ruined it. And talking to several people who do these more, I think you can do it, but by Jove, it is incredibly difficult. And most people just buy a different handle because it's easier. You can't replace that. So that's actually one good thing about this. Usually when the cable is knackered, it's curtains. But if we turn it on, of carbon the bearings are pretty much shot this thing 
is slowly killing itself. And Mealers do that quite a lot. You see on my channel how many Mealer motors have we had apart and fixed, but they didn't smell so strongly of burning. Game over for this. It's even more game over because the motor in here is completely different to the cylinder motors. So you can't just pop onto eBay and find one. You have to get an S7 motor, physically a different size. Unfortunately, I can't find one of those. And I've had one of these apart before. I'll try to remember to link to the refurb thread. We had a red one, if you remember, and they are pretty, pretty awful. Another problem with these is the filter latch stops latching, and this one has as well. I don't know if we'll do it. It's just not happy at all. My dad's has done that, and to be honest, he now just puts a bit of tape over it, and it's much, much better. So yes, this is scrap really I can't I'm not going to fix it I've told her that already she said keep it for spares and I will because another thing that is really good on it I mean I can see why she bought it just based on a look because the hose and the handle are excellent these hoses stretch to the point where my red one did this but it's on the machine they sit all baggy this one has the standard snapped hose cook. So they usually sit there with a little clip to stop it from flopping down, which is what they do. That is snapped, but you know, bar that, the hose is pretty okay, actually. The telescopic wand is good. And yeah, that's probably the best thing about the flipping machine, to be honest, is the hose. But they also have their issues. We'll take that off because it'll make it easier. Back here, we don't have a dusting brush or a crevice tool, but we do have an upholstery brush, which is good because they fit the cylinders. So we'll have that. And all of this, I think, stems, now I've had a look, from a big problem in here. Because if we open the back door, and then I don't think I can take it off very easily, we will see that we have a pattern bag. Now, I feel I'm such a massive, massive hypocrite explaining this to you because we've used pattern bags a lot on this channel. I fit a non-genuine pneumatic HEPA flows on pretty much anything that moves, bar a mealer. I always use genuine bags on a mealer. And the simple fact is they just produce so much raw airflow that it sucks all the dust out of these pattern bags. But this one has an even bigger issue in that the bag is only really on there because I've not long before filming this pushed it onto the field tube. The bag holder is completely and utterly missing. And because of that, if you notice down here, by oh, the filter, the filter is just absolutely trashed. And it's that filter being trashed, I think, that has caused the bearings in the motor to go bad. Now, if there's just the bearings, if it was just making that strange sound, probably can fix it, because, you know, they're just some, they're 608ZZ size. They're fairly simple bearings, but with the smell of burning, there's just no point in stripping this thing down to even care to fix it, I'll be honest. I'm gonna try and clean this out now. Let's use the green notes. Let's give this a bit of a mess up. I'll put it on max as well. I think that's clogged the filter. I haven't long filmed the video update for this, although you've just seen that way before this video goes. And um, yeah, I think if you clean out another vacuum cleaner with your green oats, you're gonna have a bad time because yeah, that has just plugged the filter. But hey, it got all the bits up. It did all right. I wonder how much further we can go. I think there's still some suction there. Give you a little torture test. You've had an easy life so far. I'll just be all wafted around a fairly clean room already. Oh yeah, there we go. That 
that's plugged it up. How to completely clog up a £130 worth of cordless vacuum cleaner. Clean out a completely dead, I think these are £350, perhaps £400 worth of vacuum cleaner. Ha, oh, how we laugh. But yeah, fortunately this has been dead. And because she bought it in good faith and took it home, I think she tried to use it, she knew it wasn't completely right. It's dead. And that is the main point of this video really. If you want a Miele S7, I don't blame you. They are lovely machines. Some of them really, really nice. This one is trash, sadly. Miele has very, very soft plastic. I mean, even under all of that fingerprints and whatnot, it's just scratched, scuffed, and generally ruined. Yeah, always make sure you turn the bloody thing on. Open the back door. Check that there is a bag holder and yeah, listen to it. These things don't get sold cheap, let's be honest. They are a premium vacuum cleaner. Somebody selling one is working is going to put a decent price on it. Always check. It's even more sad, really, because if we turn it upside down, the base plate is absolutely mint. And these normally get trashed. My old red one was completely scuffed and battered. This one is actually mint. No dents. No scratches, nothing. Even the wheels are okay. Wheels are hateful. They sit on some sort of locking mechanism that gets done by cogs. I've been asked this a lot in the other videos and I can't really explain how to set it up. I only did it by chance. I'll be completely honest. Do be careful. So, yeah, this is trash, I'll be honest. I mean, I don't know, part of me thinks we could go to all the efforts of taking the motor apart and whatever. But the problem is, whilst you can swap stuff about, I think the armature itself is physically a different length, or the fans on it, something like that. But I would have to ruin a completely decent cylinder motor in order to rebuild this motor. And then I'm still left with a machine that's missing its bag holder, completely trashed in a way that polishing won't fix because I'll, you know, rub off all of that writing. It's just not worth my time. I'll get more breaking it for spares. So that's <laughs> that's it really. There's no point in doing anything. With it. <laughs> utterly stinks. I don't want to run it too much because I don't know how it'll affect Phoenix. Obviously birds have a different respiratory system to us. I don't want to take the risk. It utterly honks a burning death it is mere minutes away from either the bearings exploding in a massive bang or it really started to bubble and smoke and properly go if we took this apart we know what we'd see we've seen it before so please 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 if you want a Mila s7 i don't blame you there are worst illnesses to have but make sure that before you hand over your hard earned, you get it turned on in the person's house and make sure that it is actually okay because you will never find another motor. Sure to buy a whole other cleaner and that's just a stupid thing to do. So, the reason I'm filming this video is because somebody's already asked me if they can have the hose. So, yoink, handle, that's good money. The casing, you know, somebody might be about to do what I can't be bothered and stick a decent motor in a better casing but it's not for me I don't want to do it and this is in the bin so thank you very much for watching I'm going to say comment below with your mean of S7 stories because when they work they are beautiful beautiful machines lovely to hold they look massive and they are pretty flipping heavy but when you use one they're not too bad all the weight is really well distributed it's just typical Mila massive high price zero parts availability you can get away with it on the cylinders the cylinders like to pop the components off of the motor that you see me solder up lots before usually before they do any more damage because obviously heat would have caused this but on these, there's no chance. So, sorry it's a bit of a sad video. Apologies to any Mila fans. And I, but not this, will see you soon. Bye bye.